Both of these technologies are available to be licensed through NASA and are at least eight times more effective than a traditional damper with the same mass and size. What a tuned mass damper does is it's designed to reduce the vibration of a base structure. And the idea is you create the same natural frequency in a tuned damper as the vibrational frequency of the structure you're trying to damp. So it reduces then the vibration of this base structure. Tuned dampers, you see them in a lot of different places. They have them on helicopters. You'll have like these pendulum type dampers that hang on transmission lines that stop galloping of your electrical lines. The largest tuned damper in the world is in Type A 101. And it, it has a, a several story ball that's mounted on a suspension system that's designed to sway with the building to reduce the sway of that building in the winds. The damper that we have, we have two generations. Both of them were invented out of necessity. The Ares 1X was very tall and very skinny, so the older dampers that were used during the Apollo era wouldn't fit inside of the vehicle. And when we scaled them down, they were no longer effective enough to change the damping of the launch vehicle. So we had to invent a more compact type of damper. And what we invented then was, was this, and this is our generation one. And what makes this unique is that you can see here, there's, there's a rotary damper. And instead of having a linear damper, this rotary damper is on a rack and pinion. So as, as the, the sliding mass then slides back and forth, it's not restrained as far as how far it can go. So it can go the entire volume inside of the vehicle. And what we calculated was an increase of about a factor of eight more effectiveness using this. The problem with this one was tuning a mass spring damper is somewhat tedious. You have to stop the wind tunnel test, you have to get in, you have to pull this out because you know it's down inside of the model. You have to adjust the mass, put it back in, remount it, wrap the model, look at the effect, is it what you want? If not, pull it back out, change the mass, put it back in, change the springs, pull it in, pull it out, and, and that, that took a long time. So generation two enabled remote tuning. And as you can see, we retain the rack and pinion gear drive here, but we replaced the, uh, the linear springs with a rotary spring. I have it disengaged just so we can see it rotate. And we now have a flywheel. And on this flywheel are a set of heavy masses. So most of the mass that we have on this device now is contained here in the flywheels. And you can see we also added then a linear actuator. Now we can change this actuator and we can pull these flywheels in and out. And by doing so, you either increase or decrease the effective mass of the system. Because in addition to linear translation or linear kinetic energy, you also have rotational. The really cool thing that this technology does is because it can be remotely adjusted, it then lends itself to the possibility of self-tuning. Because the only thing that then is required to make this self-tuning is software. Write the software such that you stick this device in, in place, turn it on, let it tune itself to the natural frequency, and then you can unplug it and leave it alone, and now it's a passive damper. And these are just two of many technology patents that NASA has available for the private sector. For more videos like these, check out our YouTube channel and our webpage for a more extensive list of our available technologies. This NASA technology and many others are ready to be transferred to your business. Find out more by visiting technology.nasa.gov.